death by stereo. Death by stereo. Welcome back, fellow Radiant Stars. How y'all doing today? Russell Joseph here, bringing you a tutorial. This time, not on emulation or games, but on graphic design. I'll show you where you can get some sprites for Delta Rune and for other games as well, because um, Delta Rune is just what I've been working on. I've got this little thumbnail here that we can use to play around with. Let's get this started. It's very, very, very simple. First, you want to obtain a image editing software like GIMP or Photoshop. There's tons of options out there. I like GIMP myself because one, it's free, and two, a lot of people use it, so you can find a wealth of tutorials out there, like this one, for example. Next, you want to get your sprites or your graphics. Uh, a site I like to use is the Spriters resource. And you can see we got Delta Rune here. And you've got a whole bunch of files available. You also have the cutting room floor, which in addition to showing you all the cool stuff that gets cut from a game and what could happen, but sometimes we'll have graphics too. Um, like for example, they've got the different Switch exclusive backgrounds or console exclusive backgrounds um, that the PC version doesn't get. Bum, bum, bum. So say you want Rousey, right? You've clicked this, you pulled Rosie's sprite sheet up. All you're going to do is just right click, save image as. Now, you always want to name this to something that you're going to recognize because it's, these are tiny. I already have Rosie here saved though, so I'm just going to cancel that. Once you've got it saved, go to your area you have it saved in. So for me, that's going to be sheets here. And assuming you have GIMP installed set up, right click. And you're going to hit open with and GIMP. And you'll know you're good to go because you can see this icon blinking down here. Let us know we got our boy pulled up and ready to go. So if it's your first time using GIMP, welcome. It's a bit overwhelming, but it's not hard to use really once you get to know it. And you may notice your toolbox here looks smaller than mine. That's because it likes to use grouped toolboxes. That sucks in my opinion. So what you're going to do is go to edit, go to preferences window pops up, come down to interface, toolbox, and then you click, uh, this will be checked, you can see shrunk, uncheck this, you, you don't want that, trust me, you don't want that, and okay. All right, so I've got our sprite here, so if you need to zoom in, I just like to use control and roll the mouse wheel forward. You can also use the plus or minus keys next to your backspace key for that as well. And we're going to want a sprite that we're going to want to use for our little boy here. Let's go with this one, that looks cute enough, right? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to click this rectangle tool here, shortcut key R, and we're going to just drag this here. Let's say you overshot it like this, though, and you want to be exact like me. Uh, I, believe me I get like that sometimes. Uh, click this little thing here, this little rectangle box, drag it back. You come down here, drag this back. It's something I like about GIMP that uh, I don't know if other image editing softwares do it, but I just love that. So what we're going to do now is hold Control or Command and push C for copy. Then we're going to go to layer, not layer, but um, we're going to go edit, paste as, new image. Which you can see, that shortcut key is not going to exist for you. That's because I used keyboard shortcuts to set up my own shortcut keys. Uh, you're going to want to do that if you're going to be using this a lot, because that'll just... Let me just tell you something. Clicking through menus adds up after a while. Um, so we've got a new image ready to go. And if you have visibility on your layers, you can right click. And if you see alpha channel, add alpha channel grayed out like this, that means that you've basically got transparency when you delete uh, anything in this image. You can also go layer transparency to double check that. So next we're going to go to our wand tool, shortcut key U. And there's a nice big area around this, so we can just click that and then hit the delete key. We see those checkerboards. We want to get rid of those marching ants, so we're going to go Control Shift A or Command Shift A, and we've got him good to go. If you have a image that ends up like this, where you've got an area around it, um, you can click and then hold the Shift key, and you can highlight multiple things that you can delete. Like let's say I, I decide, hey, I want to change Susie's hair color, <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> I'm not gonna change your hair color, Susie. Don't eat me. Um, all right, so we've got a little guy here. What do we want to do if we want to get rid of this space that's around him? Let's go to image, crop the content, which again, you can see I have a shortcut key there, uh, control AZ, 
or control alt z rather and now what we're going to do is export him into our transparent sprite folder which i named trans sprites just because i was too lazy to try it about transparent control shift e for export and you want to make sure that you're saving it as a png if you don't see that like say it's blank or it's something else you can just go like raw black flat and then dot p in g I know there's other formats that have transparency. JPEG does not, so don't save it as JPEG, uh, but PNG does. And you'll see this here. Uh, a lot of this you can ignore. Compression levels just basically how low quality is the export going to be. Uh, I do zero because I'm extra like that. And for small rates like this, these are rather basic and small. Look at that, 24 by 43 pixels. This is a little tiny boy, you know, which you'll see in a second. We've got this guy ready to go. To save ourselves some time, what we're going to do is we're going to go Control A for all, Control C. And then we're just going to control V and drop them in here. We'll say floating selection, paste it layer. So give that a double click. And then we'll just say ball for balls A. So what do we do about this? Well, what we're going to do is use the scale tool. Now, here's where shortcut keys can help you. Because normally you have to click the scale key tool or scale tool and then click on them like that to get them ready to go. So a way to save time is shift s that will take whatever your current layer is and automatically pop that dialog box open again if you're moving multiple things around and resizing multiple things that'll save you some time um and while you're at it you want to click this because if you have that chain like that little link closed it will retain that aspect ratio while you're scaling them up so it just makes life easier for you and make sure your interpolation is set to none. If you set to linear, it's going to be all blurred out. Or like if you set to something else like cubic, it's just not going to look as good. So make sure it's on none. And if you ever screw up your thing, like say you actually hit the shift key and you do this, you can just click reset and it'll put you right back how it used to be. I'm going to it down a little bit. You can click these four squares here to move them around. Hit the scale key. There we go. All right, so what if you want something like this blur thing here or this highlight? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to make this little, set the little yellow box around it. That's this layer boundary. And a lot of effects that you can use are going to be limited to that layer boundary. So like, say I take the smudge tool, right? And I want to use that after effect thing. Oh, well, it doesn't go outside the boundary. So if I go here, it kind of looks like garbage and I have to do extra editing to fix that. So what can we do? Let's go image. Uh, let's go layer. We're going to set layer to image size. I hope I picked the right layer. So <laughs> layer to image size. So now you've noticed the yellow border is the whole image, which means we can play around with this kind of stuff willy nilly and not have to worry about boundaries. Um, and if you want to just make sure you've got a copy of him ready to go, you can have him pulled up here or just make a duplicate layer. So if you mess up and get into too much whatever with it, you can just delete it and start over. So what if you want to do this highlight effect? That's very simple. Easy trick. Let's get our fuzzy select back going. We'll click them. Then we'll hit the control I. And you see we've got the fuzzies around them kind of like this, showing that the inside of them is highlighted. And by the way, if you ever highlight and um, you don't see the marching ants, for whatever reason, even when you invert, it just means they got turned off. It can happen. So just hold Control T. Make sure you got those ants on. It'll help you just make sure you've highlighted what you need to highlight. Now that we've got him highlighted, we're going to go Select, Row. You can also use borders and alternate one as well. Row, 10. Let's go 12. Let's go bigger. Now, the reason why I'm using this behind him is, like, say we did it like this, right? Oh, well, yeah, see, there's a problem right there already. It, it replaces some, so we don't want that. We want to do this, because what it'll do is it'll color over him here. It'll color over the copy that we made. Oh, and you can click these eyeballs to kind of turn off layers, which is also very useful. Sometimes you want to just have layers off so you can focus on the specific ones. Like if this is too distracting for you, you just go bing, 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 bing. And now we're just focusing on the boy here. All right, so say you're done with that. Control, Shift, A, bing. And then what if you want that kind of 
blur highlight effect. And that's also simple. What you're going to do is go to filters and you're going to go to blur Gaussian blur. Now normally you got to worry about this annoying thing called clip to the input extent, but since we've made him bigger, we don't got to worry about that. Now if you're doing something like these, like this image here, um, I had to, um, you know, it's, it's smaller. So if I was actually Gaussian blur, so like if this is clicked, it won't let any blur go outside the line. So if I go like this, you can see it's not going to, it's the same, same issue as like with the other effects. So let me turn that back off and let's go back to Rosé down here. So we're going to do another shortcut key. So since we want to use a Gaussian blur, we've already been using it. So let's go control shift F that will call up the settings for the last um, filter that you've used and some of the tools and colors as well, but definitely anything under the filter menu. Well, most things under the filter menu anyways. Uh, and we're just going to you know, just play around with this. And much like with the resize tool, if you, whoops, whoops, you just reset, bam, back to normal. You can also play around with the X, Y individually, which just affects like how it's going to be. So if you want like a kind of like a weird blur like that, but I'm just going to go like that, go like that. And let's just do that for now. And then if you want to make that stronger, you can of course do another Gaussian blur layer, or you can just go down here where these double boxes are and go bing, bing. And we've kind of made it a little bit bigger. Nice. And then if you want to merge them all together to make it more manageable, say you're satisfied with what you've done and you want to be able to move all the guys at once, uh, well, you can always, of course, make it back up and then come down here and go bing, bing, bing. And there we go. And we can take him and scoot him around. Now you notice his uh, border's a bit, you know, big. How do we fix that? Just come down to layer and crop the content, which I have that set to a control shift X. That's kind of the basics of it. There's more you can get into with like transparencies and opacity and all kinds of tricks. That's why I said have this box here, because you've got all these different tools you can play around with to get all kinds of cool little effects. Like this here was using this little cityscape back here. Use the perspective tool, which normally, if this toolbox is in that minimal format, you have to right click and find the range. It's a pain in the neck, that's what it is. But there you go. Now you can take that, you can use it for whatever you want. And say you want to use this like in a video. So say you've got your Adobe Premiere Elements 2015 because I'm old like that, and you want to use it in this video. Well, you can, uh, well, you need to export them to a zone image. So that would be Control C, Edit paste as new image and then just export them like say raw and there you go and that's uh yeah that's how you can do with sprites uh, if you want to do animations that's a little bit more into an advanced thing um you're gonna to have to learn how to either rip gifs uh rip like animations off from the game itself or learn how to set up sprite sheets for animations that's something we can do at some other time because i have a feeling this has already gone on longer than it needs to because i'm just like that one of your tutorials uh but that's just kind of a primer you can take whatever you can take that and apply it to different different things. That being said, uh, let me know if there's anything other questions you have regarding this kind of stuff. If it's your first time doing this kind of thing, um, I know it can be a bit, again, a bit overwhelming, but plenty of tips, tricks out there. And I've used this a lot myself for my, um, for my thumbnails and for some other personal projects. So if you did like you saw, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, become one of my radiant stars and join me on the journey to discover excellent arcade and excellent uh, furry games and otherwise. I got a TikTok if you want some behind the scenes stuff. X, if you want to chit chat me up on there. And I also have a Patreon if you want to support the channel and a newsletter that I need to remember to update. <laughs> that being said, um, thank you very much for watching, fellow Radiant Stars. And remember, no matter what anyone says, you are a beautiful star. Take care, and I will see you all later.